On BBC One in 50 Minutes, Sir Robin Day introduces another hour of lively debate in Question Time. First, we hear Gerald's story in this week's episode of Jury. If I'm doing shopping, I have to know what we need. But I gave you a list. You're after them chocolate biscuits, weren't you? No, of course not. Well, you know what that doctor said about your weight? You do your trousers up. Oh. You look like a tramp. And I don't know why you've got this on. You look like an ice cream man. It's all in fashion. You've that nice new one I bought you in the sales. But you stand still, will you? That won't fasten, I keep telling you. It's only because you're too fat. Give over, I'm all right. Yeah. Now then, where's them payment boots? We owe two weeks on that telly. Oh, you'd still have black and white if I had my way. Oh, you know you like it. Oh, and get away with you before that chemist closes. You know I can't do without my prescription till Monday. And you won't be able to get it for me then. And don't spend all morning in the pub. Oh, you're a right tarty, you are. <laughs> Go on with you. Tell you what, if you behave yourself whilst I'm out, oh. I'll bring you back a baby sham. There's no need. I don't want drink. It's caused enough problems in our life already. Ah, well, uh, I'll best be off. Hello, love. Did shop in? Yeah, filling my basket. <laughs> Cheeky monkey. Hey. What? Like oh, go on with ya. <laughs> See ya, darling. Bye. girl then oh haven't you got a kiss for granny jeremy doesn't like kisses oh. do you jeremy <laughs> <laughs> oh. all right ma'am oh fine love oh hey do you know i must have known you two were coming today i've got to What? We brought some sprouts from the garden. Oh, which you left in the car. Hello, Mother. Oh, hello, love. Well, how about a cup of tea, then? Will you sit down, love? Wait, your dad's going to be sorry you called while he was out. Still, he shouldn't be too long. He's just gone to do some shopping. He's bringing some fish and chips back. Hey, why don't you pop up and get some? Then we can have them together. Oh, we can't stay long, Mother. But not even for a cup of tea. Uh, how about a glass of sherry? I've some left over. Sherry? Right. 
from a trifle I was making. It's in that bottom drawer there if you'd like to get it out. I'll get the glasses. He still hasn't fixed that lock, then? <laughs> no. No, he's got a new one, but never gets round to putting it on. It's not a big job. Shouldn't take long. Uh, mind you, it must be 15 years old. Our silver wedding. The children clubbed together and bought it for us. You were still at school then, weren't you, Philip? Aye. We should have clubbed a bit more and bought you a decent one while we were at it. It's very nice. It came as a complete surprise, you know. Go on. <sighs> get that lock. I'll put it on. No. Won't take a minute. Well, if you would. Right. I'll need a small screwdriver. Yeah. Gerald O'Lan. <laughs> Two chalk eyes is an uno cornetto per favore. <laughs> and if you can't oblige, a pint will do. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Um, Peter, see to Graham's glass, would you? No, 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 calm down, no time. It's just one of my little tricks. Um, say him again, Peter, and uh, give this old bugger some of his usual muck. I shall, sir. Oh, Tom, thanks very much. Uh, I was just going to get you one. Uh, hello, Mr. Swales. There's where we've got to keep you northerners happy, do our little bit for race relations, especially now you've grown so important. Important? I mean, all this jewellery business, I mean, they don't ask just anyone, you know. They wouldn't ask this drunken bugger, would they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this drunken bugger's got better things to do than <laughs> sit around pontificating, like <laughs> some. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, of course. <laughs> Make a nice change. Oh, thank you, Peter. Oh. Bye, that's grand. It's always better when it's free. How the <laughs> hell you drink that bloody awful concoction is quite beyond me. You should try the real stuff, Gerald. I would, if he sold it. <laughs> you know, you also are not to have left you up north to rot, you old bugger, instead of coming down here to play a guy. You could have poisoned yourself in peace up there. <laughs> well, he's all right, is our Phil. Knows how to run things proper. Got very good job in town hall, you know. Mind you, same with the rest of the family. They've all done well in their own way. So you've said, Gerald? Not bad for a man who started life driving six horses across the field. All the kids have had grammar school education, all three of them. I could have sent them out to work, brought some money in, made life easier. But I wanted them to have what I'd never had, a chance. You promised to take us to the animal sanctuary. I hadn't forgotten. We could have been on our way by now. Look, I'll just finish this, and when she brings the kids back, we'll go. OK? It's amazing, isn't it? Mm hmm? I've been asking you to put a lock on that bathroom door for six months, and here you are, fixing your mother's china cabinet. Look, we bought her it. Anyway, I feel responsible. Your father could have done that. He's too clumsy. You said it would only take a minute. Oh, for Christ's sake, Louise. Lay off, will you? They're my parents. And I am your wife. Where are you going? To rinse the glasses. I'll tell you one thing. When I get in that jewelry box, I'll keep my eyes wide open. Them barristers can turn black and white where they twist things about. I thought this was your first time at uh, Tins. On jury it is, but I were a witness once, though. Saw this cyclist sent to hospital by bloke driving jack on wrong side of the road. I said I'd speak up for cyclist. And the uh, driver got off. I bloody did. Just because some smart ass young barrister with a starch collar made me out a bloody liar, though. Well, I suppose you could have been lying for all he knew. <laughs> well, I wasn't. That's the whole point. But the bastard got off. I swore I'd never volunteer again. I thought you were looking forward to this jury service. Oh, well, I am. But it's altogether different this time, isn't it? I'll be on t'other side, won't I? It'll be me who's making decisions. 
thought I heard you, Mr. Sadler. You ought to bring your bed here. I might, <laughs> if you'd move in with me. Wicked old man. And he says he's not interested in other women. <laughs> nay, I'm not. Just a bit of fun, that's all. I'm the only woman I ever wanted, and I mean that. I've never wanted different, and there's been no better wife. Wish they were all like you, Mr. Sadler. Oh, well, happen I've been lucky. We well, should bring her down here sometime, Daryl. Nay, nee, she's not a drinker, never has been. Quite right. What I really popped in to tell you is that your friend Mr. Bonforth's in the other bar. Oh, as he stays there. Oh, he's all right as Billy. You've just got to get to know him, that's all. Well, there were rather you than me. We were kids together, you know, and that's a long time ago. If I'd met someone from my hometown after moving 200 miles, I'd want it to be somebody different from Billy Barmforth. Ah, well, I suppose I'd best show myself. Mm. Oh, um, Pete, uh, be a good chap and stick one through there, well, Gerald. Oh, ta. Uh, uh, excuse me, gentlemen. And the best of British luck, sir. Come on, then. Kiss your granny bye-bye. Don't suppose it's any good asking you. I'll get them in the car. Bye, Mother. Bye, my love. Come on. Take care. Away from the window. Thanks for popping in, son. It was nice to see the Bairns again. Aye. Everything all right, ma'am? Money and such like. Oh, yes. And your leg? Oh, it's not too bad if I remember to take the pills. They make me that tired. Are you sure there's nothing else? <laughs> no. Now, don't you concern yourself about me. I can cope. Is it Dad? Go on. They're waiting for me. Ta-ra, man. Ta-ra, son. Uh, do you want a drink on Graham, Billy? <laughs> no, thank you very much. Ring if you want me. <laughs> I wouldn't talk to that lot. They were the last people on earth. Hey, they're friendly enough. You should have had one, Billy. He can afford it, can Graham. <laughs> I wouldn't be beyond one to that clever bastard. <laughs> He's just a bit of a joker, that's all. Aye, but not at my expense. He's all right. You've met him before, Billy. I wouldn't piss on him if he were on fire, and that's a fact. What's up with you, Billy? Don't no, up with me. Get your feet out of my back. Well, don't take it out on him. You know, she lives for those kids. That's always been the problem. She'd never have married him if she hadn't been pregnant with our Anne. And she'd never have been pregnant if he hadn't got her drunk. When we were kids, he sent us out for walks every Sunday afternoon. Bloody miles we used to go. And none of us wanted to. Always in a foul temper when we got back and all. You never told me that before. He sent us out so as he could tap my mother up. He never got anywhere. That's why he used to take it out on us. You don't know you're born, you two. I don't think he's had much luck since. Mrs. Simkins, oh, you're looking so pretty. What are you doing on this <laughs> wonderful fine day? <laughs> oh, your fish and chips will get cold. I'll bring them round. You can warm them up. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> 
Make a fool of yourself in here as well as in the street. Come on, love. Oh, you stupid beer. Where have you been all this time? And what time do you call this anyway? Well, I had to queue up for these. And it's stone cold. While you were making a fool of yourself on the streets and in that pub, I don't suppose it crossed your mind that you might be needed back here. Yeah, don't go on, love. I'm sorry I'm late, but we just got talking. You can't walk away. You know how it is. Hey, it's still warm. Uh, it's no thanks to you. You know, Philip and Louise were here while you were out. No, I'm not missed him, have I? Why didn't you send him down for a drink? Well, some people have other things to do than drink. And they were here for an hour as it was. Oh, damn. Well, I wasn't to know, was I? If you got home at a decent hour, you might. No. Be fair, love. I'm not usually behind, am I? It's just next week's a bit special. They all wanted to know. Me being on jury doesn't happen every week. Eat your fish, love. It's haddock. Special. radio fixed up. Now you can have Wireless in bedroom. I go to bed to sleep, not to listen to Wireless. Well, in morning, then. I'm too busy of a morning to listen to that thing. I thought you'd have liked it. Well, you'd have done better to have mended that cabinet. Oh, right, well, do that and all. You're too late. Uh, Philip did it this afternoon. Why, he's uh, done a good job. Uh, well, I'm going to bed. Right, well, I'll just clear up table and then I'll be with you. I thought you wanted to watch that film. No, no, not especially. I've had two sleeping pills. I thought your leg was better. Ah, uh, well, that's all you know. I'll probably be asleep when you come up, so... Don't make a noise. Do I look smart enough? As smart as you'll ever look, I suppose. Well, I thought I looked all right. Go on, you'll miss your train. Oh, go and get me coat. I wanted you to be proud of me. What are the lighting arrangements in your living room, Miss McCormack? There's a main centre light. A ceiling light? Yes. And a spotlight in the corner and then the standard lamp. 
And how many of these lights were turned on as you sat with Donald Fleming having coffee? Spotlight and the standard lamp. Not the ceiling light? No. So it was subdued lighting rather than bright lighting? I don't like bright lighting. No, exactly. And in this subdued lighting, Donald Fleming came over and sat by you and took hold of your hand in order to see your ring more clearly. That was just an excuse. To touch you? Yes. A reasonable excuse, surely. For a man who wishes to get closer to a woman? A man who wishes to make a pass? You have surely had experience of many such situations, Miss McCormack. Oh, my lord, I don't think Miss McCormack need answer that. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lord Smith. You need not answer. My lord, I merely wish to establish that uh, Mr. Fleming's move was a typical piece of courtship and was, such was yes. something that... Uh... Yes, Mr. Runswick, and you have established it. Thank you, my lord. Did you try to take your hand away? He was holding it too tightly. But did you try? Uh, well, I may have. Um, I, I don't know, but I couldn't. Miss McCormack, you told us earlier that your cup of coffee was spilled before the act of intercourse took place. Yes. Might it have been spilt later, after intercourse was over? No, yeah, I know when it was spilt, when I said, when he pulled me down. That's when, not afterwards. Mr. Cormack, please, please bear with me now. I would like to take you through the events after the act of intercourse was over. Donald Fleming stood up, and then he sat down on the floor beside you. Yes. What did you do? I just lay there. I couldn't move. And how long did you lie there? I don't know. It was probably only a minute or two. It felt like years. And then? Well, I... I got up. Slowly or quickly? Slowly. I found it very difficult to move. And what was the defendant doing? I was just sitting there. I just moved very slowly away from him and went to the bathroom and locked myself in. But you watched him all the time, though? Oh, yes. And, and somehow I felt I was safe for if I could see him. And once you were locked in the bathroom, what did he do then? After a bit, um, and I heard him moving about, and he knocked on the bathroom door. A loud knock? No, uh, it was quite soft, and I screamed at him to get out. I screamed and screamed and screamed. Mr. McCormack, I understand that the standard lamp in your living room was knocked over during the course of that evening. Yes. Have you any idea when that happened? Um, no, I can't remember. Might it have been knocked over by you as you were walking towards the bathroom? You were after all, watching the defendant and perhaps not seeing where you were going. I don't think so. But it might have. Oh, it might have. Miss McCormack, I have to put this to you. That you let this man into your flat, brought him a coffee, allowed him to sit by you, did not care to take the trouble to conceal the fact that you were wearing nothing beneath your bathrobe, and that you did all this knowing full well that he was attracted to you. No. You're not a naive woman, Miss McCormack. You must have understood the effect your appearance and dress and behaviour were having on Donald Fleming. You did not attempt to lessen that effect, did you? Did you? I can't answer that sort of question. You did not wish to lessen that effect, isn't that it? Because you wanted him to make love to you. I did not. Everything you did that evening insists on it. Your behaviour was either that of a very foolish woman indeed, and I don't believe you are foolish or that of a woman fully aware of the situation and, and, and content with it? No. And then? And then after the act itself, struck by guilt, ashamed of what appeared to you casual and promiscuous behaviour, only then did you turn on Donald Fleming and scream at him. Ah, uh, no, this is just not true. And scream at him to get out. Guilt caused uh, that, no. did it not? No, this is simply not true. I mean, it's simply not what happened. It's not. It's not. Do you regret your behaviour on that evening? Of course I regret it. No, I regret every moment of it. Thank you, Miss McCormack. You wish to re-examine, Mr Lloyd Smith? Very briefly, my lord. I have only one question, Miss McCormack. You do understand what counsel for defence is saying? That you had sex with the defendant willingly? Yes. 
Is that true? It's a lie. Thank you. I have no questions. Are there any reasons why Miss McCormack should not now be released? <clears throat> Thank you, Miss McCormack. You are free to go. My lord, uh, I must apologize. My uh, next witness, the doctor who conducted the relevant medical examination, has been delayed on a case. Uh, I'm told that uh, he's on his way here, but it may be 10 minutes or so before he's with us. Do you have any other evidence we could be getting on with in the meantime? Uh, it, uh, it would uh, cause problems, my lord. Uh, it does seem appropriate that the doctor's evidence is heard next. And so you're asking me for an adjournment? Uh, if possible, my lord. And the doctor is actually on his way? Yes, my lord. Well, very well. We will adjourn for 10 minutes. Very boring, isn't it? Boring? But the girl in the witness stand? Not quite the word I would have chosen. Oh, well, no, I didn't mean that... Oh, hell, I mean, it's boring for us. Spend more time out of court than in it. Hey, them barristers. They seem so friendly-like. You'd think they'd be rivals or something like that, wouldn't you? You know what? I reckon they know how it's going to turn out. I don't think that's at all, Mick. It's up to us now, not them. We're in driving seat. No, oh, we can tackle a lead what they have to say. Yeah, but they know what's what, don't they? They can see what's led on. Even that geezer for the girl. He knows. See that a mile off. You just watch his face when he's talking to her. He don't believe her any more than I do. Well, I'll take a look, Mick, but I think you're wrong. But it's going to be very interesting. Again. Well, they're forecasting rain. All done? Yep. Come and have a cup of tea, eh? Yeah. Look, it's just like you saying she's all sweetness and light. Oh, she's a nice lass. You can tell that. I'm not saying that she isn't. But it's not that simple. It takes two to tango, as my old mother used to say. Yeah, that's right. What are you saying? Listen. You look like a bright girl to me. I know. I've got daughters. Educated and all. A lot better than me come to that. But a lad like him wouldn't do a thing like that without a reason. He's not the type, you can tell. We'll have to wait and see. I don't think any of us should be able to tell yet. Oh, yes. The girl's right, we should wait. A lot of evidence to come yet. That's the figures on the near side on Belloc. Jungle Jim, the light colours and dark cavern by Greville Starkey on the right. Calaglay Stable, who at the moment is around joint favourite of the Derby, depending on which bookmaker whose list you look at. And if Jungle Jim even runs well here, even gets into the first four or so, that will be great encouragement for Calaglay's connection. Dr. Hutchinson, you are a registered medical practitioner. Yes. And I understand that you've been a divisional surgeon for some 13 years. Yes. Now, on Thursday, the 13th of May, 1982, at 2 a.m., at the request of the police, did you examine Chloe Jane McCormack at Amersham Police Station? Yes. And did you make a note relating to your examination? Yes, I made an entry in the surgeon's book at the police station. And when did you make that entry? Uh, directly after I examined her. And perhaps, therefore, it would help if you were to refresh your memory from that entry. No objection, my lord. Now, uh, when you examined her, relating first to her mental and emotional condition, uh, what did you find? Well, she was extremely distressed. I prescribed a tranquilizer. Is that a normal thing to do? Well, it depends upon the patient. If I think they can cope without, I, I don't bother. Can you uh, help us a little more about her mental and emotional state? Well, she was extremely distressed. Uh, can you uh, 
help us with anything else? No, she was quite lucid, but she was extremely upset. Uh, was there um, any evidence of shock? You could say she was in temporary shock. Well, I'm asking you if uh, she was or she wasn't. Can you help us? Uh, she had been and was recovering. Did you uh, find any injuries? Well, I um, carried out a complete physical examination. And I found some early bruising on the inner thigh, some bruising and swelling of the labia, that is, the outer lips of the vagina. And there was some, or also some bruising to the left wrist. Uh, since there is no dispute that the accused had sexual intercourse with her, uh, perhaps I need not uh, trouble to go into any further detail, unless, of course, the defence wishes to. Yeah, my lord. Then to uh, return to the bruising of the labia and the inner thigh. Now, is that consistent with normal sexual intercourse? Well, it's difficult to tell. Some people bruise more easily than others. I would have thought it unlikely. And uh, what about the bruising to the wrist? Oh, yes, that was of a more violent nature. Well, if someone simply took hold of a person's wrist, would you expect to find bruising? No, no, no. It would have to be a very strong grip indeed to cause that injury. I've seen similar bruising made by handcuffs. Thank you, Doctor. <clears throat> Dr. Hutchinson, can we talk about the bruising on the wrist first? You say you've seen similar bruising made by handcuffs. Yes. But you've also told us that some people bruise more easily than others. Yes. Could that not equally apply to the bruising of the wrist? Yes, but that's And strong... the other bruising could have been consistent with normal, if enthusiastic, sexual intercourse. Yes, that is possible, but that would not account for the bruising on her wrist. There was no evidence, though, was there, Doctor, that the bruising of the labia and the bruising of the wrist were caused at the same time? No. They could have been caused by entirely separate incidents at entirely separate times. Could they not? That is possible. Thank you, Doctor. Grace, I'm back. <laughs> Hello, love. <laughs> now, close your eyes, open your hands, and see what the good Lord has sent you. Good Lord, indeed. I'm surprised you dare mention his name. Go on. Uh, I'm sitting at the table. Here, here then. Peppermint creams, your favourites. Wasting your money. That's peace offering. For what? Oh, for anything. That's very nice of you. But you needn't have bothered. I wanted to bother. By that smells grand grace. What a day I've had today, eh? What a day. No doubt you'll tell me all about it. Well. Certain things I can't discuss, of course. But you know, Grace, I'd love to be involved in that life. Standing there in gown and half a wig talking. <laughs> you do enough talking already. Well, it's a rape case, you know. I've told you, I don't want to hear anything about it. Ah, but we mustn't close our eyes to these things, Grace. There's women on jury, as well as men. Pretty girl, uh, one that's been raped, I mean. Or supposed to have been raped, I should say. Supposed? Oh, well, that's what we're there to find out, isn't it? Mind you, it sounds to me that she encouraged him. I suppose it would, to you. Well, it doesn't look the type. Poor little bugger looks lost in that dock. It's a girl you should be feeling sorry for. Not if she led him on. Led him on? But you don't know the facts, Grace. I know all the facts I need to know, Gerald Sadler. What do you mean by that? You know very well what I mean.
Uh, that's uh, quite enough, uh, if that's for me. You haven't started. What's the matter with you? Well, I um, had a big lunch. Where? Well, we all went down to the pub. I mean, you can't be the only one, not... All I can tell you is, it's a rape case. I would go into detail if I could, but the law is the law. Come on, you old bugger. Brighten the gloom a bit and give us some of the juicy bits. Graham, I can't. I'm sorry. I'd like to oblige. Yeah, I bet that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nothing to laugh at, Graham. But that lad up there, it's a serious business, complicated and all. Well, look, there's nothing complicated about rape. You know what they say? Rape's simple. If it's inevitable, you lie back and enjoy it. <laughs> well, that's what I always tell them anyway. <laughs> ah, well, I promised I'd see Billy in public bar. Oh. Um, give her one for me. What's up with your other mates tonight, then? No, it's a serious matter, is this, Billy? I don't mind a laugh, but... Taking piss out of a situation like I've seen today, I have to draw the line. I'm very glad to hear it, Gerald. Do you know, that lad could go to prison on my say-so. I heard Throat Bar. He doesn't look as though he'd hurt a fly and all. Poor little bugger. Stood in that dock, accused of all sorts. Must be terrible. And all us folk watching, listening. I don't blame the lad for wanting a woman. I can understand him getting carried away. You sound as though you're excusing him. Well, she might have encouraged him. If he wanted it, if any man wants it and he can't get it willingly, he should pay for it. Oh, it's all very well saying that. I do. You what? I'm not ashamed of it. I got no wife. I'm not exactly God's gift to women, so I paid for it. I've done for over 20 years. You mean... You go with a whore? No, Gerald. With a woman. Same woman, as a matter of fact. But you pay her? Well, of course I pay. Well, then she's a whore. Not in my book. I think that's terrible. Well, at least it's honest, which is more than you can say for most marriages nowadays. But where's the love? I'm fond of her, and she likes me. It's Quite nice, actually. We're quite close. Oh, I know which I'd rather have any day. So do I. And it won't be what you've got. Oh, well, that's all right, then, isn't it? It is by me. Ah, well, I'd best be off. At an early start. <laughs> ta -da. Are you awake, love? I wasn't. Um, be still, lovey. Did you enjoy me peppermint creams? I'm saving them to take to our Phillips. They're for you, not Philip. Yeah, the burns on that. You'd spend your last penny on those kids. Same with our own. Uh, and I'm not selfish. <coughs> Oh, I do have to, Gerald. It's small enough, it's this bed. I only wanted a cuddle. You might hurt my leg. I, I won't hurt your leg. I know you. Don't you think we've had enough of this sort of thing at our age? But I just wanted a cuddle. 
I'm not stupid. Why don't you act your age instead of behaving like a kid? They get all the joy, don't they? The kids. Always been the bloody same. My kids, my kids' kids. Every bugger. Even Billy Barnforth. How would you like it if I went with a whore, eh? Because that's what he's been doing for 20 years. Did you hear that, eh? Billy Barnforth used to fancy you when he was a lad. Well, he's been going with a whore for 20 years. Maybe I'll ask him for a number. Wouldn't bother you, though, would it? As long as you're left alone. It's always been the bloody same. Every time I come near you, I feel like that lad in the dock. And, you know, all I ever wanted was you. All you ever wanted was a dustbin to dump your rubbish in. It's only me, ma'am. you been on the sherry then? <laughs> well, I, I just thought, you know, it was left over. Oh, I. It helps me sleep. Well, it would do, if you have that and your pills. You'll have to watch it, you know, ma'am. <laughs> oh, this is stupid, making such a fuss. Hey, come on, ma'am. <laughs> it's those pills, you know. They don't do any good. And they make me that tired. Is it Dad? No. No. We have our rows. You know that. I think it since he was made redundant. Hasn't got any work to go to. He's that much time on his hands. And then he feels useless. He 
This is his garden, you see. And he had to sell his bike. <laughs> Hello, son. Bye, it's grand to see you. Hello, Dad. Mum's round the door, please. Oh, something wrong? No, no. You're invited to dinner, that's all. After a pint, that is. Mum's there already. What are we doing standing here gapping for? Come on. I tell you, I'm as dry as a duck in the desert being in that court all day. <laughs> it's great to see you, lad. Sorry about Saturday. Come on. We'll walk it. Hope I can last the journey. I wish you could have seen it. I'd love to be one of them. Wig, gown, all that. Hey, they don't have to take some stick from that judge. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, their background's very different to mine. They wouldn't have dirtied their hands, I bet. I shouldn't think so. <laughs> you know, life can be hard sometimes, Phil. That's why I wanted all you lot to have a head start, if you know what I mean. I wanted you to have the advantages I'd never had. I feel sorry for that lad. Lad? Oh, well, he's 23. Looks like a lad. Looks lost in the dock. Lives with his mum. Don't think he's got a father. Same as me. Not a very good start, eh? <laughs> what that lad needs is a wife. That's what he needs. If he had a good woman behind him, he wouldn't be where he is now. You can't blame the lad for wanting a woman. I can understand him getting carried away. You can't force things on people, Dad. Not if they don't want it. Ah, well, come on, let's have another one. No, thanks. Mm. Go on. Sup up, Dad. We got time. Louise will have your dinner. Oh, uh... We don't want her being upset with us being late. <laughs> and I don't want your mum shouting at me for showing her up. <laughs> Mind you, she's a good woman, Phil. I could have done a lot worse. A lot worse. She's one in a thousand, is your mum. And I tell you one thing, hand on heart, I've never looked at anyone else all our married life. I've had me chances. <laughs> Who hasn't? But she's the only one I ever wanted. If you two are as happy as we are, you'll be all right. You're right then, Dad. You know, Phil, I think the world of her. And she thinks the world of me.